Welcome to the SVG TV News for Monday, April 27th. I am Khalil Cato with the details. In our top story tonight, a coroner's inquest has been ordered into a shooting incident in the Camden Park area on Sunday morning, which left a police officer and a civilian dead. Larissa Pugsley Kidd tells us more in this report. Shots rang out at a residential area in Camden Park at about 8.05 a.m. on Sunday, April 26th. When the dust settled, two officers were shot. One died on the spot while the other was taken to the main hospital in Kingstown. A civilian involved in the shooting incident was also shot and died on the spot. A news release from the Police Public Relations Department said a party of police officers, including the late Sergeant 209 Filbert Chambers, who was attached to the Cattells police station, was dispatched on duty to execute a search warrant at the home of Gleason Lewis in Camden Park. While the police were at Lewis's home performing their duty, he opened fire killing Sergeant Chambers and wounding Police Constable 700 Verrill Sam in the process. The police returned fire and Lewis was fatally wounded. Colleagues of the deceased police officer and relatives were seen openly crying as his body was being removed from the scene. Today at the Cattell's police station where Sergeant Chambers was stationed at the time of his death, his colleagues were said to be heartbroken and are receiving counseling. Station Sergeant Brenton Smith, who is the senior officer in charge of the Cattell's police station, said Chambers' killing came as a surprise as they are struggling to come to grips with his death. But it was difficult for the members to even continue the duties, but they tried in their best, understanding well that they still have uh, so many other persons within St. Vincent and Grenadines to protect, and within this particular district, and all have done exceptionally well, despite of the circumstances. Mere hours before his death, Chambers' last WhatsApp status was this cryptic meme with a coffin. In reference to the injured police officer Verrill Sam, he is said to be in stable condition at the hospital. Reeling over the loss, Sergeant Smith said, being a police officer has its perks and downsides, and the latest incident is one of the dangers the police face in the line of duty. And understand that the duty of a policeman is what it is as it happens now. It's never an easy task. You go out on duty, you don't know if you're coming back. That's the nature. That's what we stand up for, unfortunately. But as he called for duties. Sergeant Smith said the deceased officer was involved in a number of activities, including the police youth club, and he will be missed greatly. So who, after just over a decade of service, has been promoted to the rank of sergeant. So that within itself is an achievement for him. And of course would have had a lot to go. The unfortunately as well, the or the party have lost their loved one. Condolences to the family. We wish at this time that they would also find strength to get a grip of their loss as well and hope that as a, a family between the police force and them will be able to work together and work things out and be able to console each other. In reference to the deceased civilian, Gleason Lewis, residents who spoke off camera said he was a good person, but they observed a change in him in recent times, including being a nuisance to persons visiting the nearby beach. Commissioner of Police Colin John and the members of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force extend condolences to the immediate families and friends of both deceased Sergeant Chambers and Lewis, noting that it is a very sad and painful time for both families and the entire police force. For SVG TV News, Larissa Pogsley Kidd. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez says he will not cave in as it relates to the government's position for Vincentian sailors to return home in a structured manner. The Prime Minister was speaking on WFM's Issues at Hand program on Sunday, highlighting the conditions under which the sailors working with the various cruise lines can return home and the ongoing negotiations in this regard. PM Gonzalez said the cruise lines have a responsibility to the sailors and that he will not give in to attempts being made by some to undermine his efforts. There are persons who want to undermine the government's negotiating position. They are sending things to cruise ships cruise lines, telling them that um, the government must pay for this thing. You 
hear what I'm telling you? <laughs> and those who are in sending, they're writing it up all about so that the cruise lines are seeing, mm -hmm. believing that people are bringing pressure on Ralph <laughs> so that Ralph will cave in and just bring them willy-nilly. <laughs> but I wouldn't cave in. We have to do this thing properly. And Cecil, and Pijan, and Lansford, you know me. You know when I give you my word, I want to see them, our, our nationals come back. But it has to be done properly. Mm -hmm. And we can't be so unpatriotic to try and undermine your own government in relation to some people who don't want to take up their responsibility. Some people meaning maybe some people inside of cruise lines. Yes. The Prime Minister said while the sailors seem to be well accommodated on the cruise ships, many of them wish to be with their families at this time, but highlighted one major issue which must first be addressed. The problem which has come up, which came up last weekend, which Bishen told me, and I saw it subsequently, is that the U.S. government, the CDC, the, the Center for Disease Control had said to them that they have to submit to the, the, the cruise line had to submit to the authorities in the U.S., the CDC in the, in the U.S., Center for Disease Control. The protocols getting the, the people from the ship to the port, to the airport, to, the, to, to go on to the charter flight. And they had told Bishen that they will make that submission during the course of this week here, which has gone. And that on Monday, which would be tomorrow, they will indicate what is the position. PM Gonzalez also took the opportunity to refute claims that he is charging the cruise lines as part of their conditions for their return home. Um, and to outline and to refute this terrible lie that we were charging people. We were charging the cruise line. Absolutely not true. And it's painful, I must tell you this, for this man who's talking to you, this, that I was up front early when everybody was saying keep them out in accordance in, 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 in the way in which some other governments in this region and across the world were saying keep your nationals out. And I said, but we cannot keep our nationals out. And I got a lot of messages from families and from cruise, people from the cruise ships saying thanks for establishing that principle. And we hope you could work out this thing in time to relieve us of this pain why we, are, why we still have to be on this vessel. Yesterday, St. Vincent and the Grenadines recorded its 15th positive COVID-19 case, which officials say is part of a local cluster. A release issued by the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, said the new case is closely associated with the 13th and 14th COVID-19 positive cases, which were reported on Tuesday, April 21st and Thursday, April 23rd by the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Simone Kieser Beach says investigations have determined that the last three reported cases of COVID-19 in SVG form part of a cluster due to import-related local spread. There are now seven active cases of COVID-19 in the country, with eight persons recovered and 100 in quarantine. The CMO continues to stress the importance of maintaining the public health measures currently in place, which include hand hygiene, cough etiquette, physical distancing of at least three to six feet in public spaces, and strict adherence to quarantine and isolation. These measures, the CMO maintains, are vital to slow the spread of COVID-19 in the country. And the public is now being encouraged to wear cloth or homemade masks in situations where they cannot maintain physical distancing, for example, taking public transportation, going to the barber, and even waiting in line at the bank or when visiting elderly people. This recommendation is one of many coming from Dr. Kieser Beach, 
who is also the chair of the Health Services Subcommittee of the National Emergency Committee, in a release on issued yesterday. The advice is based on recent recommendations coming from the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, on the use of face masks in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. In a release dated Friday, April 24th, CARFA said, in keeping with the mandate to wear masks in public by many Caribbean countries, it is advising its member states to employ the use of the precautionary principle and encourages the correct use of masks, homemade or cloth, by the general public while they are out in public. At the last press conference hosted by the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment, epidemiologist Dr. Jose Davey said while it is not mandatory, it is recommended for persons to wear face masks while practicing basic hygiene, physical distancing and cough etiquette. So although we have not issued a mandatory advice for face masks, it remains a recommendation. While Minister was speaking, he did mention that when or if there is community spread, then that advisory would be made mandatory. So for now, it would remain a recommendation if you go out in public that you all wear face coverings. It can be fabric with or without the pelon, and of course, we must know that using face masks or face coverings that is not the only way for protection. We must maintain all of the other measures given, such as hand hygiene, physical distancing, and all of the cough etiquette, etc. The health authorities said the public must also be reminded that medical masks, including N95 masks, which are in short supply, are to be left for the hospital and healthcare workers. Additionally, persons with any symptoms of a cold or flu, such as fever, cough, or sneezing, should stay at home and contact their health care provider by telephone. The COVID-19 Task Force or Health Services Subcommittee of the National Emergency Committee is encouraging the Vincentian public to follow the social and physical distancing guidelines for the upcoming May Day holiday. May 1st is observed each year in SVG as International Workers' Day or May Day in recognition of the sacrifices and contributions of Vincentian workers. This year, the COVID-19 Task Force is asking persons to specially acknowledge and celebrate the outstanding work of teachers and first responders, including nurses, police and Coast Guard officers, immigration and customs officers, and doctors during this challenging time of COVID-19. The task force says a good way to recognize and acknowledge their outstanding work and to help them do their jobs more efficiently, more efficiently will be to observe the social physic and physical distancing guidelines for May Day, this Friday, May 1st. And this includes staying at home and, if the need arises, if the need arises to go outside, to maintain at least three feet from others while in public. Practice good hygiene and wear face masks if traveling in public vehicles and standing in crowded places. These recommendations are for limit that should be these recommendations for limiting close contact and making close contact safe, the task force says, will go a long way towards reducing the spread of COVID-19. With the country having a small import-related cluster of COVID-19, the task force says the support and cooperation of all citizens are needed at this time if the country is to minimize any further spread of the virus. There are great opportunities available to take the agriculture sector to the next level. So says government's advisor for special projects, Dr. Gerald Thompson, during the Issue at Hand, Issues at Hand radio program on Sunday, discussing issues related to agriculture and the impact of COVID-19. Dr. Thompson said unlike other Caribbean countries, which have abandoned agriculture in favor of tourism, SVG has tried to balance both industries. He said, while the tourism industry will be negatively impacted for some time, new opportunities have opened up in agriculture. Dr. Thompson said, many of the crops which are traditionally grown here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are becoming popular overseas, thus creating an opportunity for locals to benefit economically. We have an opportunity in terms of a variety. What if we were to start planting a whole set of peas. Somebody called me about this this morning. Part of the whole set of peas and 
in the in the spare time that people have, people are able to shell them, and and maybe they might even be frozen and so forth in in a, in a particular way. Maybe you know, I, I, I would have called uh, uh, sorry, I would have called, um, I would have called an entity you are associated with this morning to we'll look call at it, that. You call know it. I mean? You mean Vinci Fresh? Uh? Vinci Fresh. Yes, I would have called Vinci Fresh, and so <laughs> okay. to look at that in terms of you know being able to handle that and package them and so forth, v- vacuum pack. And basically, you could have green peas. I mean, in the store, these things are fifteen, sixteen dollars, maybe a, a, a bag. Can can we actually is it economical to produce? But they're being fresh. I'm sure other countries will be able to utilize them. Dr. Thompson said there is also the opportunity for SVG to market its produce as fresh and organic. Make sure that our agriculture on a great standard. But one important thing is that with food now, people are beginning not just looking at food for food's sake, but food with the phytosanitary, with, 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 with the phytosanitary aspect, no pesticide, as well as all the, all the phytochemicals in them. People are conscious about good food, immune boosters, all these type of things, food that are going to make you healthy and so. I think St. Vincent has an opportunity to market that in a particular way, that we have pesticide-free stuff, that we also have product that really the best in the Caribbean in terms of from its nutritional profile and I think that marketing can be done and as well as making sure there is food security from a national point of view for Vincent people um, because you haven't seen the big long lines we've seen in some other islands for food but I believe that we do have that ability to be able to export a larger amount of produce, good quality produce to the other day. I wanted you to make that contribution. The Juvenile Justice Reform Project Act was passed last December, which finally gives which finally gives the clout to work with children. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Mobilization, Nerissa Gittens McMillan, said the reform project seeks to give young people, male or female, a second chance to be good citizens, especially those who have been in conflict with the law. Speaking at the handing over ceremony of musical instruments to the RSVG police force on Friday, Gittens McMillan said that the idea of the National Diversion Program, which falls under the Juvenile Justice Project, started with a conversation with former band leader ASP Hall on how the police band can assist the youth of the Liberty Lodge School and other juvenile centers in keeping them on the straight and narrow path. Those individuals who come in conflict with the law, rather than incarcerate them, brand them, and you know in our society, we are not a forgiving people. We talk about all of us make mistakes, but we are not so easy to forgive when those mistakes do occur. So how do we keep them on the street and narrow? The Juvenile Justice Project is meant to give individuals a second chance, create a diversion program, rehabilitate and reintegrate them in society as better citizens. And music can be one of those methodologies used. The PS said that the Juvenile Justice Project also helps the Ministry of National Mobilization to work along with stakeholders who will impact the lives of these juveniles to make the society a better place. So that when the children utilize them, our children, that is those who would be housed at Liberty Lodge, those in care and protection, as well as our juveniles, and the other young people in St. Vincent and the Grenadines who would come to the band room in summer, that we would have a better St. Vincent and the Grenadines eventually, because that is what we really want. If we don't make it happen today, these children, some of us, are going to come to us in a different form. So we have to make up our minds. Do we want them to come through our doors saying good morning, hello, thank you very much, or through our windows 
we implement that we don't want.